The closest counterpart to the toga is the Indian sari. It's also a huge piece of fabric, up to 6 meters long, in which you have to wrap yourself beautifully. If you don't know how, it won't work. Only the toga is even more complicated. It's not a rectangular piece of fabric, but a long semicircle, made from heavier, woolen fabrics and specially laid in beautiful, wide folds. Originally, togas were worn by everyone in Rome, including women and children. But in the most ancient times in Rome and the rules did not exist, wrap up as you want, and pieces of fabric were chosen not long. But by the time of classical Rome, by the first century B. C. It turned out that toga was only a man's official clothing, an approximate analog of today's business suit with a tie to match. The toga was the distinction between a true Roman citizen and all sorts of slaves and mere outsiders dressed in some kind of chitons and tunics. Emperor Augustus officially prescribed the dress code, if you want to go to a forum, wear a toga. The toga became a symbol of the citizen of the capital, provincial officials wore them, of course, but mostly on major holidays, and they served as objects of satire, the famous Juvenal denounced them, but only Roman citizens in the capital wore togas on a daily basis. If a Roman went into exile, he was automatically deprived of the right to a toga. However, an ordinary man would not have wound it on himself. Just as ladies of the 19th century needed maids to put on a corset and crinoline, so the Roman needed a special slave, the Vestalierius, to wrap Roman men in togas. It was a whole profession that had to be trained. In the absence of irons and steamers, it was a difficult task to arrange the woolen cloth in beautiful folds so that it would hold up all the time while the master made speeches in the Senate. The folds were fastened with special clips, and the toga was hung on special hangers to hold the folds. There were different togas. The usual everyday toga was white, like a black suit nowadays. Another version of a snow-white toga, and here I come out in a dazzling white suit, was the toga candida, the toga of a candidate for office. Well, yes, it must be spotless. The color purple was of particular importance. Triumphants wore purple togas embroidered in gold. For boys, togas with a red fringe were used because legend has it that the first king of Rome, Tarquinius, at the age of 14, dyed his clothes with the blood of his first enemy. So here the red border is a sort of pioneer tie for young Romans. However, the red fringe was the sign of the higher aristocracy and officials. Kites in togas, Apuleius called the officials. In Petronius the rich man Trimalchio was wearing a toga with a purple border, and he was going to be buried in it. Cicero denounced the hipsters of his day, wrapped in whole sails, not togas, apparently, in his day, the longer and wider the clothes, the more fashionable they were. The most fashionable were considered not woolen but silk togas, silk was valued by weight of gold, and one toga could cost a fortune. There were mourning togas, black or grey, perhaps in the absence of modern bleaching agents, this category was gradually replaced by the usual everyday white ones. There were even yellow ones, again with a red border, especially for the augur priests. Gradually togas went out of fashion and by the time of the fall of Rome even emperors did not wear them. But one way or another, this garment remained one of the symbols of ancient Rome.